Praise the Lord. Praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that surpasses all understanding always be with you in Jesus' name. I am going to talk briefly about Trinity. The truth that God is one and at the same time God is three. In order for you to understand how God is one and at the same time God is three in one, you have to understand that you, as a human being, you are one. And at the same time, you are three in one. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. Help your children to understand who they are so that they will understand who you are. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, I cover this teaching with the blood of Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. I'm reading Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. I read, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord is one Lord. The Lord God Almighty is one. At the same time, there are three persons in one God. As I said a while ago, in order for you to understand how God is three in one, Three persons in one God, you have to understand that you, as a human being, you are also three in one. This teaching is divided into the following points. Point one, every human being is a trinity. Point two, God is a trinity. Point three, the holiness of the trinity of God. Point four, the holiness of the trinity of the righteous conclusion point five conclusion point one every human being is a trinity what do we mean by this every human being is three in one unlike angels every human being has a spirit a soul and a body Unlike angels, angels are spirit. They don't have bodies. They don't have souls. Angels are simply spirit. But every human being has a distinguished spirit, a distinguished soul, and a distinguished body. How do we know that? Because the Holy Bible clearly teaches so. You, as a human being, you have a spirit. That is crystal clear as taught in the Holy Bible. For example, in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7 says that when you die, your body will return unto dust and your spirit will return unto God. Who gave it? In Luke chapter 8 verses 53 to 55, Jesus healed this child and the spirit came back. Because when somebody dies, the spirit, death is a separation of the spirit from the body. When somebody dies, his or her spirit separates from his or her body. So when this dead individual was healed by Jesus Christ, the spirit came back. In Acts 7, 59, Spirit said to the Lord, I mean Stephen, Stephen said to the Lord, Receive my spirit. Stephen was stoned to death, but before he died, he requested that the Lord should receive his spirit. His body was here on earth, but the Lord received his spirit. In Revelation 4, 1, 
the Lord told John, come up here and I will show you things hereafter. So the Lord was calling the spirit of John. The Lord was not calling his physical body. The Lord was calling the spirit and the spirit of John left his body and went up to heaven and the Lord showed him the things that he wrote in the book of Revelation. So from this few scriptures that we have just mentioned, it is crystal clear that you have a spirit. Let me give you a very simple example. Have you ever dreamt? When you dream, it is your spirit that is seeing all the dreams that you, that, that, that you see. Why? Because your physical body is asleep. Your physical body is lying on the bed, is sleeping. But your spirit doesn't sleep. Your spirit does not sleep. There is no spirit that sleeps. Your spirit doesn't sleep. So your spirit is involved in dreams, in all the dreams, and in all the, the, the visions or revelations. So it is your spirit that is involved in dreams. It is not your physical body because your physical body is sleeping on the bed. But your spirit is involved in dreams and visions and revelations. So, every human being has a soul. You have a soul that is different from your physical body that we see. In Genesis 2, verse 7, the soul of the human being was created by God. In Genesis 35, verse 18, when Rashad, when Rashad the wife of Jacob died, her soul departed from her body. Genesis 35, verse 18. This means that when somebody dies, the soul departs and the spirit also departs. So we have seen that every man being has a soul and every man being also has a spirit. Every human being has a soul and every human being also has a, a human spirit. You, you have a soul and you have a spirit, a human spirit. Body. It is crystal clear that every human being has a body and this body is physical. Unlike the human spirit and the human soul, which are not physical, the human body is physical. We see an example in 1 Corinthians 12, 12. We all know that we have physical bodies because we can see them. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Now, in Hebrew 4, 12, we are told that there is a spirit, the human spirit, the human soul, and the human body. So, joints and marrow in Hebrews 4, 12 have to do with the human body. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, we are also told that every human being has a spirit soul and body so you have to understand that you are three in one you have a soul which is different from your body you have a spirit which is different from your soul and different from your body so all these three make you a human being unlike an angel who has only a spirit an angel doesn't have a soul an angel doesn't have a body an angel is just a spirit but you have a spirit you have a soul and you have a body and these three make you a human being. You are three in one. You are three, make up of three components. It means you are three, make up of, you are three in one. You are, make up of three components. In other words, you are one in three. You are a human being, but you have three main components, which are different. You have the human spirit, the human soul, 
and the human body. Now, if somebody is talking to your spirit, the person is talking to you. If the Lord is talking to your soul, the Lord is talking to you. If the Lord is talking to your physical body, he's talking to you. So we see in Revelation 4 1 that the Lord spoke to the spirit of John. He said, Come up hither, and I will show you the things that are going to be hereafter. And the spirit of John left his body and went to heaven. And the Lord showed him the things that he wrote in the book of Revelation. So what does it mean? It means that your spirit is having the same name that your physical body has. Your soul is having the same name that your physical body has. And your physical body, of course, is having the same name that you have. So if you are John, your spirit will be called John. Your soul will be called John. And your physical body will be called John. If you are Mary, your soul will be called Mary. Your spirit will be called Mary. And your physical body will be called Mary. So you are three in one. You are a human being with a spirit, soul, and body. Your soul has to do with your mind, will, and emotions. Having said that, and having understood that you are three in one, it is very simple for you to understand how God is three in one. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are all one God, just as your spirit, your soul, and your body are you. You are three in one. So is God three in one. In Genesis 1 26, we are looking at point two now. God is a trinity. In Genesis 1 26, God says, Let us make a man in our image. Why? Because we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So we can interpret this to mean that just as God is three in one, the human being that is going to be made will also be three in one. The human being is going to have a spirit, soul, and body. Just as God is three in one. God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So human being is three in one. The human spirit, the human soul, and the human body. So we see an example of uh, the Trinity of God in Genesis 1 26, Genesis 11 6 to 7. That the Lord said, that, Let's go and see what they are doing because they are building the, 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 the Tower of Babel. So we also see a reference to the Trinity of God in that uh, passage. We also see that in Daniel 7, 13 to 14. In Matthew 28, 19, the Lord Jesus says that we should go and preach the gospel to all nations and baptize believers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we see the Trinity in that command in that great commission we also see the trinity of god in first john 5 7 first john 5 7 i think we should read that passage so let's read first john 5 uh, 7 so we are saying that your understanding that you are three in one will help you understand that God is also three in one. We have seen how you are three in one, that you have the spirit, soul, and body. So God is also a trinity. God has God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You cannot say that. How is it possible that there are three persons in one God? 
If you are saying like that, that means you don't understand that you are also three in one. You don't under, you don't understand that you are also a, a spirit, a soul, and a body, and that these three constitute who you are. These three make you a human being. Now, First John five seven. I read First John five seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The word here refers to the Lord Jesus Christ, according to John 1.1. 1, 1. So there are three in heaven that bear record. The Father, the Word, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. In like manner, here on earth, every human being is made up of three. Every human being is made up of three persons. You have the spirit, you have the soul, you have the body, and these three are one. These three are one. Your spirit. Your soul and your body are one because they constitute who you are as a human being. We also see an example of a trinity, of God's trinity in 2 Corinthians 13 to 14. Another example, Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. Another example, 1 Peter 1, 2. So we have seen in point 1. That every human being is a trinity. In point two, that God is also a trinity. Point three, the holiness of the trinity of God. God Almighty is holy, 100%. Psalm 145, verse 17. The Lord Jesus Christ is holy, 100%. Mark 1, 24. As an example, the Holy Ghost is holy, 100%. Psalm 51, verse 11. So the Trinity of God is a Holy Trinity. In like manner, your Trinity is supposed to be holy. You are called unto holiness. And this holiness has to do with the holiness of your spirit, the holiness of your soul, and the holiness of your body. As revealed in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 To be more specific, your spirit has to be holy. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1b Your soul has to be holy or has to be with that spot, has to be pure. 1 Peter 1.22 Your body has to be holy, has to be with that fittiness. 2 Corinthians 7 1a Conclusion. It is very, it is very, very important for you to understand that you are a trinity. You have the human spirit, the human soul, and the human body, and these three are one. In like manner, God Almighty is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son. God, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one, according to 1 John 5, 7. And Deuteronomy, 4, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Deuteronomy 6, 4 states clearly that God is one. 1 John 5, 7 states that God the Father, God the Son, and God, Holy, and God the Spirit are one God. In like manner, you, as a human being, you are three in one. The human spirit, the human soul, and the human body. If you say you don't understand the Trinity, then it's a saying that you don't understand who you are because you are three in one. If you can understand that you are three in one, then it will be very, very simple for you to understand that God is three in one. You cannot say that because there are three persons in one God, no, God is three. No, 
It's just, it's just saying that you, because there are three is present in you that you have the spirit this the soul and the body and then you are three no you are one human being but you are three in one god is one but god is three in one just as you are you are three in one also i hope this uh, helps you in the future we are going to study in details the human spirit the human soul and the human body because we are studying holiness, we are going to study the holiness of the human spirit, the holiness of the human soul, and the holiness of the human body. Remain blessed until we see again. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the revelation of your word, that every human being is three in one. King of glory, as we have examined your word briefly, help your children to understand that just as every one of them is three in one, so are you, Lord. You are also three in one. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Share this video so that people who don't understand the Trinity, they will understand that they are three in one. And that will help them to understand the Trinity. Remain blessed until we see you again in Jesus' name. Bye bye. In Jesus' name. Amen.